Hi, Joe Olson, uh, Chief Growth Officer with Media Monks, and I'm here with Kathleen from Microsoft. Kathleen, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Kathleen Hall, Chief Brand Officer at Microsoft. And Kathleen, we just left your uh, session with Brand Innovators, and I sit on the side of the business where I oversee revenue for Media Monks, which is a large organization. But I spend probably most of my time dealing on the business side with trying to um, help companies understand what's happening in the marketplace with consumers and that kind of stuff. Less about the marketing services things that we do downstream, but more about what it's doing to their business. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that stuck out when you were having a conversation, number one, it's it's incredible that you were through two big regimes at Microsoft, right? And and you took, um, you talked a couple, uh, told a couple stories about things that had happened with Steve that you had worked through um, that were really interesting about things that, you know, you guys got aligned on how to take the brand forward. And then Satya took that forward and you've now, you know, spent, mm -hmm. you know, um, 15 years sort of building that, that brand around. I'm curious, just um, from an executive perspective, um, you've been through lots of changes with Microsoft P&L wise too. So like, how have you uh, maintained, you know, y y your sort of success in your role and how you define it every day and, I know marketing gets you excited, so there's the yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. but like just inside of the, the thread of Microsoft through that period of time. Well, it's interesting. Um, it kind of goes back to some of what I talked about earlier when I first said I was going to Microsoft, how yeah. my friends and the industry reacted like, well, what? Because at the time it was <laughs> like the poster child for bad marketing. Yeah. But for me, that's the opportunity, right? So I think what's kind of kept me going is, you know, I'm a unique skill set. In, in the rest of the island that is Microsoft. And that's very engineering driven, very business strategy driven, which is great because it's right. kept us where we are through you know, 30, 40 years. Um, but being that kind of alt perspective and voice, regardless of the role is really what I think keeps me juiced, you know? Yeah. Keeps me kind of, I don't know, special in that mix. Yeah, and then how do you, how do you get that, you know, like you're able to pull all those threads together in your head and even having research as part of it. I know it's a huge advantage, as you mentioned, but it's also another thing you have to think about. Right. How do you how do you keep all those those threads together and then disperse those down to the team, especially like, you know, I think you said um, a little over half the teams in Seattle, but half is uh, under half is remote. Forty percent is remote or whatever. Yeah. Um, how do you keep everybody aligned as those changes are happening? You know, it's funny. I think one of the biggest transitions for most of us in the in the marketing and creative industries is that transition you have to make from being good at doing something yeah. to being good at running something. Huh. And it's a kind of a opposite skill set in some ways. And it's very scary when you're yeah. good at something, you don't want to let go of doing it. So when I'm, you know, when I was in control of media, nobody's better at me than that. I don't want to let go. And then when you're doing all the creative, I'm like, ah, I can't let anybody else. I got to go to everything, <laughs> you know? So eventually you kind of take a step away from it. I think the main skill you have to then learn is big org communication, how to keep people informed and motivated and connected. And I'm very strange, especially at the company I'm at, where you would think a lot of email, a lot of teams. I pick up the phone a lot. Yeah. I pick up the phone and say, last night I did, there was an issue going on with something we were working on. I'm like, hey, can you talk? Um, so I'm a big fan of instantaneous kind of clarity and alignment. Yep. Um, and, and personal connection helps a lot. Now it's a big org, so it, I can't talk to everybody, but then having the pipes in place that continually disseminate that information, I think are really important. So yeah, I think the number one skill is constant communication and a lot of casual communication. Yeah. It was interesting when you talked about getting people together and uh, we recently, um, had a, like a full on growth summit where we brought people from all over the place and some people were new. You haven't seen them, you know, the joke about being able to tell how tall somebody is and all those things, but your, your, uh, your notion about people being socially engaged and that being just as important as talking about business goals. Right. Um, I think since the pandemic, um, that's been one of the things that you, you struggle with in that environment where you're trying to you know, be efficient. It's like, Hey, let's have, um, you know, uh, chat conversations. Let's have text conversations. Let's have email conversations, but you miss the like intimacy of talking to somebody on the right, phone right. or the hallway when you're walking, walking totally. out of the meeting. Hey, I didn't say it in the meeting, but yeah. And then the person that was on the call probably missed that. Those, that casual communication is so important. I think, look, nobody more than us wants to convince ourselves, Hey, this remote thing and hybrid thing is yeah. wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. And the thing that I did discover, I mean, we created the, the team's ads on teams during the pandemic. Like, it's not like a, I was shocked that we could creatively ideate and execute without being together. So it's yeah. not like we can't do it. I think what we've learned subsequent to that is there's a special sauce component. I think one of the reasons that worked at the time is we already had the relationship foundation. Yeah. So especially for those early in career or new to a company, 
the physical presence to establish that foundation is really important and there's no substitute for it. So, you know, the, the value of coming together. And then when you come together, I think we learned, as you heard me talk about this, don't jam the agenda with like, yeah. I'm going to shove content into you. I can shove content into you on teams. Like yep. it's really about, Hey, do you know? So we did some exercises where like everybody put something in a basket that was something nobody would ever guess about them. And then we, as a team, 200 something people in a room trying to guess who's, whose uh, line that was awesome. super cool stuff. But you, you know, it's important. And even, even in my day-to-day -day management, I think, again, when you're first transitioning to like big management, you're like, it's got to be super serious. And I got to have like this email rhythm and I got to have, and we learned, Hey, open space. Like I have, I have, we call it open bar. The acronym for my team is brand advertising and research. So bar, oh, okay. so open bar is not drinking. Open yeah. bar is what do you want to talk about? Yeah. Or like manager, you know, people who run the company. I remember a friend at Fidelity told me this. I was at Fidelity for a few years as SVP of advertising and brand. And when they would analyze the media category, like for investments, they'd always ask me what I thought and who should they talk to. And they never want to talk to the top top. They never want to talk to the C-suite people. They want to go two levels in because those are the people who really know what's going on in a company. And I feel the same way on our teams. Like the two level down manager, I got to have a pipe to them. I can't always depend on yeah. the cascade. And a lot of that is two way. So then when we have those manager meetings, what do you guys want to talk about? What are you hearing? What are you thinking? What's bothering you? And it takes a while. People are hesitant. Like, should I raise my hand? And then after a while, they realize, oh, this is a safe space. Yeah. And it's invaluable. And then you see, like, the, we, you know, we do a lot to check on our morale and our engagement and our and, and it, it gets positive and positive over time. So that, you know, casual, open, two sided conversation is really important. I've noticed, too, um, it's funny that it seems like. Um, the younger employees that you have, the more strange it is that you call them on their phone to have a conversation. It scares them. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it, I, I think about often like, you know, these big scalable organizations and as AI is coming in automation and efficiency, it's like, you know, is there, is there a, is there a sort of um, watch guard on the other side that's saying, Hey, you know, we need to make sure we're still keeping the casual conversations, the trust building things, you know, that it takes to get things done in big organizations. Cause to your point, you know, um, trying to communicate objectives across different people's, um, you know, uh, uh, indicators of success or whatever their uh, metrics are, their ROI looks like. Um, when you've got big things that you're trying to do, a threat across an organization, it's hard to get all those people aligned so that all the pieces match up right, to right, get right. you do. And I would imagine sometimes it's, hey, I'm just going to trust Kathleen because I know her and right. I've worked with her before and I'm going to trust her. Right. Um, and that becomes incredibly important as you Exactly. grow up in an organization. Yeah. How, how, what, what's your thinking around that as it relates to some you know, of the younger funny, employees? As you're saying it, my brain's like reliving my history at Microsoft. <laughs> it's probably the number one thing that I built and you have to have, like when you first come in to any organization, they're like, who, who is this person and what are they going to disrupt in my life? Because, yeah. you know, I'm not having it. And um, the very much the outsider, insider click. And the first thing you have to show is what are you going to add value to what they're doing? And the minute you show you're going to add value to what they're doing, they want to be with you. Yep. And then they see it returns on their goals. And now there's trust built. Oh, you're going to help me. You're not going to hurt me. And then you build those pieces over time. And then there's equity. So now our legal team, SELA, we call them, knows I'm not trying to screw them or get around their rules. I'm going to try and do it the right way. But I want them to understand like what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So I have legal in concepting. Right at the very beginning. Cool. So they're not hammered at the back end and said, oh, I wish I'd known, you know. So I think, I think that that trust building every little tiny step is so key to success in large matrix organizations. Yeah. And you got to know, like, wh who are you going to call? Like, the Ghostbusters, like, <laughs> hey, we're having a problem here. Who do you go to? But not, again, not the top, who's the most senior person. Not sure. a higher guy. So no, no, I know the guy who really knows how this works. Let's talk to him, you know, yeah. her. The, yeah, I think, you know, on, the, on the, just a, I find that whole conversation fascinating because I spend most of my time in large matrix organizations trying to help disparate parts of their organizations talk to each other. Right. I, I feel like I do that. You know, you end up knowing these organizations more than they know themselves and you're building bridges for other people. And as, as managing younger people, you know, you see this like attention to want to just like check boxes, move quickly, get more things done. And you're sort of like, you need to slow down and create those real relationships that you can then tug on. Um, and it's hard to explain that w when it's, um, I always use this example when I was younger, <clears throat> I was pitching a, uh, um, a part of a uh, project that we were doing to an investor 
of one of our investors. And um, I didn't want him to invest in our business. I just wanted to invest in this project. And we were going back and forth. And he was saying, I'll invest in the business, but not the project. And eventually, we just agreed to disagree. And he said, I think I've just been in more war rooms than you. I don't know how to explain that to you. And I remember when I was young, it just like made me so mad because it was kind of like your dad or your mom being like, you're just going to have to trust me. But I feel like that now. That's like an OK Boomer kind of thing. Yeah, it is. But as you get older, you do you do just sort of want to be like, you know, you're just going to have to believe me. Yeah. Because until you need to pull on those things, you're not going to realize how important they are. Right. But I think then in that instance, that guy is at fault. Yeah. Because you need to have somebody else understand your, like, I think and maybe it's just my age and my longevity now. Like, my job is to teach the next generations and levels what I know and how to get there. Yeah. And a lot of it is the skill of collaboration conversation. Like everybody, you're right. It's a box. Everyone thinks it's activity, right? I got to have this activity to this end game. And it's, and I said, no, no it, activity versus impact. Like yeah. it's not, it's not always the same thing. And also it's not about winning. It's about getting to a place where you're both happy in yep. negotiations and in partnerships. And I think that's something people forget. Like, it's not a, it's not a like, oh, oh, I got to get a, no, no, we got to, we got to figure out what's the path together. Like yeah. the NFL, that's probably the best example of a, they benefit, we benefit collectively. We're all better. Yeah. That's yeah. a relationship. And I think that's a hard skill. And I think again, that lack of interpersonal connection and experience sometimes might hurt people in the long run. Yeah. I, I think we got to figure that out. Yeah. I, uh, to, to just kind of switch gears a bit, um, uh, you know, when you think about value of sort of like brand, I guess, going forward in the marketplace today, um, uh, we've gone through this whole digital transformation that happened where for 20 years, you know, we were in digital transformation. Yeah. It's happening in our companies, it's happening in our lives, et cetera. Then we went through the pandemic and all of those things. And we have all these new behaviors and we're working remotely and all these things are happening. If you look at like, you know, influencer culture and creator culture and all those kind of things, I think it's changed a lot of the way just people behave, right? right. So as businesses, we're all trying to figure out what that means to our P&Ls and our businesses and our brands. Right. Um, one of the things I think uh, I end up in a conversation a lot with with um, executives, especially like COOs, CEOs, CFOs, people in that world, which I think is making the CMO role even more important as well in that mix. But is the idea that like it's it's not about making a product anymore and trying to find an audience that's going to buy your product. Right. It's about building an audience and then finding all the ways that you can provide value sure, to that, that audience. audience. Yeah. And you, you you know you talked about it pretty liberally in different ways in there. It feels like it's pretty close to your way of thinking about Microsoft and the brand and the audience that 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 you're developing there. Even going back to when you uh, first started and said, hey, we need to go talk to them and figure out why they put their trust in us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and then relate our products to that. Right. right. And, and if the stuff doesn't Start match, we source, shouldn't yeah. be doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I often struggle with like a lot of executives who are, who aren't there yet. Like they still find themselves in the sort of, yeah, but I make this product or this service and then I need to go find people to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your take on that whole. You, you're so space? right. And yeah. it encapsulates, I think a lot of where things go wrong. And I think we need to deconstruct a little bit. What my experience of when things work the best, like you have this continuum of engagement inside the companies, like the engineers build something, product management tries to like, you know, sort of prioritize and articulate it. Product marketing then does like messaging and then yeah. you have like integrated marketing does all their shit. And then you go to media and creative. And it's like, holy crap. Like by the time <laughs> you're done, like this, like again, like building, if you're two degrees off here, imagine when you get to the end of that yeah. wall, the, the wall's going to fall down. So what I find is sometimes when there's kind of crisis and emergency mode, you cut out all that middle stuff. You put the guys that are gals and the guys that are building it next to the people who are going to communicate it. There's magic. Yep. Like, I think that that's kind of maybe a model of the future, a, a much more um, reduced and connected relationship between the marketers and the makers. Yeah. Like that, that to me is the, uh, I think when it works, like, you know, Panos, when he was the builder of Surface, we were right in there with them building it. You know, this latest round of the team building Copilot. Yep. We're in weekly meetings with them saying, that's not going to work. We think this will work, you know? And it's funny because the sensibilities are very similar, right? They have a lot of sort of, design and and intuitive kind of people experience in their heads we just kind of help shape it a little bit with latest and greatest information yeah. and then the kind of fission can happen so that that's my dream of like maybe how companies will evolve a little bit in the future yeah and i think even even putting more pressure or not pressure but just like more opportunity i guess on the on the brand side because i think it's close to the culture side of things 
to be able to create new opportunities for the business, right? Like I think the there's this backwards context is key. Yeah, there's this backwards yep. way of like, no, but we the business make a thing, and then this organization goes and sells the thing, and you're yep. like, yeah, no, but there's another. There's and a everybody's in a bubble. You can yeah. be in a bubble in Cleveland. You can be in a bubble in Seattle. You can be yeah. in a bubble in Detroit, and you get outside that bubble. It's like, no, that's not how the world. The context. So I, I think one of the biggest things we need to do as marketers is we're, we're the arbiters of the social movement. What's happening in the world? Because the magic happens when the, the product truth and the social truth align. Yep. Right? Like you got to find what's that, like that Ked's example I gave, which yeah. is like, hey, if we just chase performance athletic footwear, they would have died on the vine. But the movement of like back to the driveway, simple life after the 80s, aligned to that brand equity and boom, you're off and running. So that's what I think we need to do more of. It's really social science. It's kind of what you know, planning used to sort of be. And yeah. we have better tools now. I can, like I said, I can social listening. I know what kind of language people are using. I know yeah. what's negative and what's positive, what's hot, what's not, you know. So that as a resource is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And that's probably why research and insights being part of your team is so, so good. It's so important. And it's also the language you talk to engineers with, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, totally. If I just say trust uh, me, yeah, they'll the be like. Yeah, the data is a yeah, translator yeah. back to the. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like I hear what yeah. you're saying. You're like, read this report. They're like, yeah, yeah. I got it. I yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Now we're connected. Here's, the, here's what the data shows. You know that product? you love in that feature no yeah. one's using it here's yeah. the data yeah. yeah 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 interesting yeah well hey i appreciate you spending some extra yeah, time no, it was it's great, great to hear you earlier and yeah, yeah it's definitely really appreciate fun. it great to see you great to see you too thank you thanks